The purpose of uh, this video is to uh, provide some background for the upcoming PFC agenda uh, for the November 1st meeting. And I'm posting this early because the uh, Vegetation Committee and the Road and Recreation Infrastructure Committee will have important meetings this month prior to the November 1st meeting. And I thought uh, this background would be helpful for, for those two uh, committees as well. So the three documents I'm going to review as, as uh, background to the agenda are first the outline for the recommendations document. Uh, second is the business process swim lane diagram for the pre-project design phase. And the uh, third is a second swim lane diagram, this one for the role of the PFC in the uh, uh, environmental review, the NEPA review. So let's begin first with the outline for the recommendations. And the uh, the purpose here is to give everybody an idea of what the, uh, the target is, what uh, the document will look like that would eventually be submitted uh, to the Forest Service. And it, the format is similar but a little bit different uh, compared to the Mill Creek Council Mountain project. The structure in the table of contents here mirrors the one-page mission and goals statement that the coalition adopted earlier this year for Lost Creek, Boulder Creek. So it begins with a, a general introduction, a little background on the PFC, and then uh, moves in the second section to a statement of the coalition goals, the, uh, the five goal topic areas that uh, were adopted. Uh, the third, since this is a CFLRP project, I have included a section that uh, states the purpose of the act that Congress passed in order to establish the program and then uh, describes uh, two different scales that are important for annual reporting of progress uh, within the CFLRP, and uh, that is uh, landscape and, and project. Uh, definitely two different scales, and the reporting will be at those two scales, and I'm including it here as a useful reminder um, throughout the preparation of, of the recommendations. Um, the, other reason to include the purpose is uh, tied back to uh, Senator Crapo's visit and his response when asked what's the future of CFLRP. And, uh, his answer was that it, it depends on effectiveness. And so I think in order to, uh, to be effective, uh, the coalition wants to keep the purpose of the program in mind uh, and uh, increase our chances for future funding. Following that are two sections organized by the uh, committee topics, vegetation is the first, and then road and recreation infrastructure is the second. Uh, the subcategories with each, within each of those is, is identical. First, a narrative description of the desired condition for the project area, uh, a section that will report the uh, current condition uh, intended to be used as the baseline. And then priorities, uh, remember that uh, according to the uh, Forest Service Administration Manual, uh, the, the purpose of a coalition is to share ideas and priorities. So the statement of priorities is, is key uh, to the recommendations document. Within that, there is a subsection on treatments. I think it's useful to identify the specific types of treatments uh, that uh, the coalition is, is addressing. And then within those, uh, that context, the uh, spatial objectives. An 80,000 acre area is, is large, and uh, not all areas uh, would, would be expected to have the same priority. And then the last section, objectives, or the last subsection is objectives. And this is the portion where, uh, as best possible, quantitative um, measures or quantitative objectives would be included. And then after those two sections, uh, the, the final one is environmental review, and uh, I've included this as a, again, as a useful reminder that once the recommendations are submitted, uh, there is a, a NEPA review process that's initiated, and it's uh, I think it's worthwhile to state what the coalition views as its role in NEPA, and then I will include a the swim lane diagram. 
as a way of, uh, of documenting that role. So in, in summary, it, it's patterned, the uh, outline is patterned after the one pager again. Um, uh, it includes a statement of goals. It, it uh, follows the, uh, uh, the general theme of uh, understanding the desired condition as well as the current condition and then recommending treatment actions, priorities for treatment actions uh, within both the uh, vegetation uh, committee's realm and then also the road and recreation infrastructure committee. So document two is the swim lane diagram for the pre-project design. This is a refresher on what was adopted earlier this year, but also uh, there, there is a revision, revision here so my purpose here is twofold. First, to remind everybody of where we are in the process, and the second is to point out the revision uh, based on uh, the work that the sub that the committees um, are doing. So the, the major interaction here is between the uh, uh, the PFC and the um, ID team. And as everybody is aware, um, we're in this committee process for both vegetation and, and the road and recreation, uh, where the subcommittees have been interacting with the ID teams. Somewhat of a delay this summer for both. Uh, in the case of uh, vegetation, their recommendations uh, in late spring addressed or asked questions that uh, needed to be addressed in the uh, field season data collection. And so they will be reporting on the status of that. Uh, and refining their recommendations based on uh, the results that they're re reviewing in October. And then uh, with uh, road and recreation, the uh, travel analysis process uh, has taken longer than, than originally anticipated. And so they will be reviewing uh, data, uh, particularly the roads data broken into three categories. Given the, the original timeline and where the committees are now, there is a added loop here in the diagram and basically what happens is in the development of recommendations there'll be an initial set from probably from both of the committees and then a question asked uh, is it ready for the final decision the final recommendation uh, by the entire pfc if yes uh, then it goes on to the ID team to uh, design the proposed action and, and alternatives and from there to the line officer for uh, releasing the notice of intent uh, in the Federal Register. If um, the answer is no, that uh, there's a need for an intermediate decision and, and the uh, committee chairs think that this is likely, then there'll be a loop uh, work again with the ID team. Uh, get additional data and refine the recommendations. And it's anticipated that this refinement will likely be addressing the quantitative objectives for the recommendations. So overall, uh, the business process, the swim lane diagram has a similar flow, uh, but uh, there's a, a modification to this decision block. Uh, is it an intermediate decision that needs refinement? It uh, goes through a loop, comes back uh, with the ID team and the committee interacting. Um, if yes, the, the group is ready for the final decision and adopts it by consensus, then it, uh, the recommendation is passed on to the ID team to uh, design the proposed action. Okay, behind door number three now for the agenda preparation is the swim lane diagram for NEPA, and I think we may have seen a reviewed an early draft of this uh, in late spring, but didn't spend a whole lot of time on it. But in any event, um, it's uh, time to uh, to review it and and make changes as needed, and then um, adopt it by consensus. There was no formal action taken on on this swim lane diagram. Similar to the other one, there are. Uh, Three swim lanes: the line officer, the uh, ID team, and the and the uh, coalition. And the starting point is uh, releasing the notice of intent intent to prepare an environmental impact statement uh, in the Federal Register, and that initiates scoping. 
The ID team then convenes public meetings, and I'm guessing we'll also have a field tour similar to what was done uh, with uh, Mill Creek Council Mountain. Uh, they receive and document those comments and identify resource issues. Now, in order to, to keep the arm's length relationship between the line officer, the Forest Service, and the uh, coalition, I've got a dotted line here representing the process we used last project, and that was re, um, the coalition submitted a FOIA request for the comments that were received. So any, any individual or any organization can do that, so there's nothing special going on here that would uh, be a, a violation of uh, FACA. Uh, the coalition then will review those comments, look for new issues. Are there scoping issues that were raised that uh, would merit reconsideration of the recommendations and priorities uh, by the PFC? If no, nothing would need to happen. If the answer is yes, there would be some modifications and uh, comments submitted back to the Forest Service so they would be aware of the, uh, the change in recommendations based on that new information. Uh, then the ID team uh, uh, analyzes the alternatives, uh, drafts the uh, EIS, and releases the draft. At that point, the coalition engages again to review and comment on the draft EIS and submit a letter accordingly. And that letter and those comments would be reviewed uh, as, uh, as part of the uh, preparation for the final EIS. And then the line officer would uh, make uh, his findings and, and uh, publish the final EIS and the record of decision. I think a, a fair question, uh, the coalition members may look at this and, and say, well, this doesn't uh, eliminate what happened last time where there were surprises and uh, in particular with uh, one watershed and, and the local population of uh, bull trout and, and critical habitat. Uh, I, I think it's important that we distinguish between uh, two different things here. There still could be surprises, but the new information or surprises would come from a, an analysis of the environmental effects from the proposed action or the alternatives and that analysis may cause the coalition to regroup and, uh, and reevaluate. Uh, how is that different from last time? This is just my observation, but I think in the Mill Creek Council Mountain project, the gap was not in so much in the environmental analysis of the effects, but that there was a missing piece in the desired condition uh, that should have been addressed in the uh, previous swim lane diagram, the uh, pre-project design. So uh, the way these uh, two swim lane diagrams changed the process, I think Kim and her team have done an excellent job of laying out the management direction, the management guidance uh, for the coalition. We know what the sideboards are. Uh, there shouldn't be anybody, any resource specialist or regulatory agency that arrives late to the party uh, and defines a or identifies a new desired condition, uh, we ought to be able to feel confident that we, uh, we have those in hand. At the same time, the uh, environmental review may uncover effects to the proposed action or the alternatives that would uh, merit reconsideration and uh, in the review process of the draft EIS, the PFC would comment on that in letter form and that would be incorporated into uh, the line officer and the ID team's preparation of the final EIS and eventually the, the uh, decision, uh, the record of decision. So those, those are the uh, three prepara major preparation items. I will also post a link to the act that uh, created the CFLRP so people can take a look at that uh, rather than just the mention of it in the, in the outline uh, for the recommendations document. And um, hopefully uh, reviewing this video and, and the uh, related material uh, will help speed up the, the discussion at the meeting on November 1st.